Episode 18 deep dived into simulation argument from a philosophical point of view. But we need to sit back and also look at it through a scientific lens to understand if there is a super intelligent designer who designed our world. For example, all primates need vitamin C for their survival and none of us can synthesize it ourselves. We humans have developed the ability to cultivate vegetables and fruits to meet this requirement while other primates die if they live in an environment deficient in vitamin C for an extended period. Ironic part here is that most animals including us have a gene for synthesizing vitamin C. But in primates it doesn't do anything. Now if we go back to the simulation hypothesis discussed in episode 18 where it assumes the designer to be capable of fixing the bugs in the simulation so as to not let us see any glitches in the world or any discrepancy in the physics it's based upon, the question that arises then is, how come the super intelligent designer added something in us which is redundant? Why would the divine creator of our world come up with a bad design? Something doesn't add up, does it? Hey Morty, there is nothing evil about this. Just shut your evil song. What? Anyway, the firm believers in simulation theory can argue that the use of this vitamin C synthesizing gene in us is currently undiscovered on purpose and it will be clear eventually when a super intelligent designer wants to activate that in us. But as physicist David Deutsch argues in his book The Beginning of Infinity that this is a bad explanation. No explanation can be attributed to something that lacks testability. So now the question is why do we have vitamin C synthesizing genes? The theory of human evolution has an explanation and it attributes it to our non-primate ancestors. Another such quote-unquote design flaw can be seen for instance in the eyes of the vertebrates who have nerves supplying blood in front of the retina where they absorb and scatter some incoming light thus degrading the quality of the image we see. There is also a blind spot where the optic nerve passes through the retina while on its way to the brain. These design flaws in vertebrates can be again attributed to the undiscovered purpose or even to the poor designing skill of our super intelligent designer. Ironic but can be true, right? But then if we just look into the eyes of other invertebrates like squids, we see the incoherency. By the way, I mean literally looking in the eyes and not in a romantic way. Anyway, squids have the same basic eye design but without these design flaws. So how come if the divine creator knew how to design flawless eyes for squids ended up making a substandard design architecture for our eyes? If we get more cynical in our analysis, we also see so many species getting extinct across our planet. There are more species gone extinct than there are those alive right now. And I'd like to quote David Deutsch again while stating that at this point a supposed divine creator for our quote unquote simulation seems not only morally deficient but intellectually unremarkable. And the latter attribute is not so easy to brush aside. By divine creator, I don't necessarily mean God. But these observations oppose the entire hypothesis of a divine creator of a universe. In this episode, I wanted to touch on the other side of simulation hypothesis to give a holistic view of the idea. Until next episode, be curious, stay tuned.